All right. So today we're uh, we're diving into some pretty high stakes software stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah. Specifically, what happens when the actual tools that are supposed to keep us safe online right. are the things that cause the problem? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And you sent over some articles about this CrowdStrike incident from July. Yes. Remember that Delta Airlines got hit hard. Yeah, they did. A bunch of other companies like, yeah. too. Mm-hmm. So we're going to unpack what happened there, but also, you know, what it means kind of going forward with software. Yeah. Especially as AI becomes more and more, you know, central to everything. Absolutely. It's such a fascinating case study because on the surface, it's like a technical glitch, but then you dig a little deeper. Right. And it just kind of opens up this whole cascade of issues about how we even approach building and testing and trusting software in a world that's becoming more reliant on automation every day. And it's like CrowdStrike. They're supposed to be the good guys, right? Right. Protecting millions of devices. And this update they pushed out was supposed to make things more secure. Yeah, exactly. Their Falcon platform, that's like the cornerstone of their cybersecurity that so many companies rely on. And, you know, right, yeah. the irony is that this update designed to make things better actually triggered this global outage. So walk me through it. Like, what was this update supposed to do and how did it go so wrong? So they were trying to roll out this new feature to detect a certain kind of attack, um, one that exploits a vulnerability in Windows. Okay. And it seems like they were trying to stay ahead of the curve. You know, they pushed updates in February, March, and then again in July. Wow, so that's a lot of updates. It is a lot in a short amount of time. Yeah. Was that part of the problem? It's hard to say for sure, but it definitely, you know, points to this pressure to constantly innovate and stay ahead of the bad guys. But Mm -hmm. um, the July update, it was a rapid response content update. It was supposed to refine the feature, but it had this flaw, and that flaw caused this whole chain reaction and led to the blue screen of death on an estimated 8.5 million Windows devices. 8.5 million? 8.5 million. That's like more than the entire population of New York City. It's huge. Yeah. And it wasn't just, you know, computers restart. Think about Delta Airlines. Oh, my gosh. Like, they rely on these systems, and they had to cancel or delay something like a third of their flights. Wow. It was a massive operational meltdown. So this wasn't just like a software bug. This was like a full-blown disaster. It really was. And this BCS software testing specialist group Sigist. Yeah. They're saying this whole situation kind of reveals deeper flaws in just how we approach software development in the first place. Absolutely. Especially as AI becomes more prevalent. Right. And their analysis of the CrowdStrike incident suggests that, you know, we need to fundamentally rethink how we're approaching this, especially in terms of things like quality governance and threat modeling. Okay. So those are some pretty big words. Can you break those down a little yeah. bit? Like, what does that actually mean in practice? So this quality governance thing, yeah. it's basically like, are we all on the same page about what good even means, right? right? From the people writing the code to the people who are testing it before it goes out to the world. Yeah. It's like, um, you know, when you're building a house, right? you don't want the electrician wiring things one way and the plumber putting the pipes in a different way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Right. It's got to be like a standard. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's about setting those standards and making sure there's communication the entire way through. Yeah. You know, the entire life cycle of building this software, everybody's got to be thinking about quality and security, not just how fast can we get this out the door. Especially when it's something like what happened with CrowdStrike, where it could impact millions of people. Yeah, absolutely. And that's where this threat modeling comes in. Okay, so walk me through that a little bit. Yeah. What does that actually look like in the real world? So imagine like a chess grandmaster. You know, they're thinking several moves ahead of their opponent. Right. They're trying to anticipate, like, where are the threats? Where are the vulnerabilities? Right. And that's kind of what threat modeling is with software development. You're trying to think ahead, like, how could the system fail? Yeah. Where are the weak points? And if it does fail, what are the consequences? So if CrowdStrike had done that more in this case. Right. If they'd really thought through, like, yeah. especially with all these rapid updates they were pushing out. Yeah. What are the potential consequences of this? Right. You change one line of code and it could have this ripple effect. Right. And impact systems that you never even you know, imagine. It's kind of terrifying when you think about it. It is. How one little error can become this huge outage. Yeah. And it's something that we have to be so careful of, especially as we're integrating more AI Mm -hmm. into these systems, because AI brings with it this whole other level of complexity and a whole other level of things that could go wrong. So it's not just about, can we get the AI Mm -hmm. to do what we want it to do? It's like, Well, what are all the ways it could go off script? Exactly. Right. We can't just assume that the AI is going to function perfectly in every scenario. Right. We have to be really, really diligent about testing it, thinking about the potential problems, and then building in safeguards. Which brings us back to those SIGIS recommendations. Yes. About really investing in the people. The people. Yeah. Having those experts. It's not enough to just throw technology at the problem. You need people who 
really understand the nuances of this, right. of software testing, especially in this age of AI people who can ask those tough questions and make sure that you have that high quality governance. And then this whole thing about the blameless postmortem. Can you unpack that a little bit more? Because it seems like a completely different way of looking at how we deal with these situations. Yeah. It's kind of like, um, you know, when you hear about like airline pilots. Yeah. They're encouraged to report like near misses or even small mistakes without being afraid of getting in trouble. Right. Because it's better to learn from those things. Absolutely. And to just like brush them under the rug. Right. And then have something terrible happen later. It's the same idea here. We need to make it okay for people to talk about things that maybe went wrong or could go down better. Yeah. And to see mistakes as learning experiences, not as something to be punished. So that's what that blameless postmortem is. Yeah. You just take a step back yeah. after something happens and say, okay. What happened? How do we make sure this doesn't happen again? And the other thing that Sid just recommends is this systems thinking approach. Yeah. What does that even mean? It's like we get so caught up in our own little piece of the puzzle, right? Right. But with software, especially as it's getting more complex with AI, you have to kind of zoom out and see the bigger picture. Okay. Because one little change over here yeah. could have these huge ripple effects over there. It's about connecting those dots. Exactly. And understanding that everything is connected. So for those of us who you know, aren't software engineers, but we want to like keep up with all this stuff, what's the takeaway here? I think the CrowdStrike thing was a huge wake-up call. Yeah. It showed us that even the tools that are supposed to be protecting us right, yeah. can have these unexpected consequences, and we can't just be passive. We can't just trust that the technology is going to do what it's supposed to do. We have to ask questions. Ask questions. Demand transparency from these companies that are building these systems. Yeah. Understand the risks. Like, this stuff is powerful. It is. And with great power comes great responsibility. That's true. Right. Well, this has been a fascinating deep dive. Yeah, it has. I really appreciate you taking the time to break all this down with me. My pleasure. These are such important conversations to be having. And for everyone listening, thank you for joining us for this deep dive. And be sure to check back in with us soon for another one.